Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Rodney, and I'm back. And I just wanted to come and run my mouth. Now, again, I just have to give this quick, 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 quick disclaimer. Um, I'm not at home. There will be some noise in the background. Um, you may hear some sirens. Uh, you may hear some people screaming. You may hear somebody get cursed out, <laughs> okay? Um, yeah. Um, I'm in a hotel right now, and my room is right by the street. Ooh, I'm on the second floor, so girl, I can literally have hear everything. Anyways, all right, so let's go ahead and get into this mess. What we, oh, I want to give an update. Let's give an update about that old Darius Miles. Okay, so this is according to Hollywood Unlocked. We discussed this in a previous video, um, so I'm not going to go over all the details, um, but this is just, again, an update. So now they're saying as the details emerge, um, Darius Miles did not shoot um, Jamia Jonay Harris, but admitted to providing the gun to the alleged shooter, Michael Lynn Davis, new documents revealed. This is according to Hollywood, who is this? Hollywood Unlocked. So more details are emerging um, in the tragic death of Jamia Jonay Harris, um, who was shot and killed in Tuscaloosa, uh, Alabama on Sunday. Um, new documents released on Tuesday reveal that former Alabama basketball player Darius Miles did not shoot the innocent victim but admitted to providing a gun to Michael Lynn Davis, who is believed to have fired multiple shots at Harris uh, with one of those bullets ending her life. The pair is currently facing capital murder charges um, in the death of the 23-year-old whose mother previously claimed um, was killed because she refused to talk to them. Out of the multiple shots that were fired, records revealed that one of those bullets hit Harris through the Jeep um, she was seated in on the passenger side. She was found dead when cops arrived. Furthermore, according to the deposition, the docs revealed that Darius Miles admitted to providing Michael Davis with a handgun, handgun, handgun immediately prior to the shooting. While witnesses have uh, since identified Michael as a shooter, Miles is accused of intentionally causing the death of Harris by aiding and providing the firearm, with the athlete's lawyer saying that the family, mem the family remains heartbroken over the death of the innocent woman. It was, okay. I really like, I don't really have nothing else to say. I said what I had to say in the last video. I just wanted to come and give y'all that, 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 that little tidbit because again, if this, I just saw this after I made the last video. You know, if it is true that he did not um, kill her, he's still not, I mean, okay, girl, he's not the, he's not the, girl, he's not the killer, but girl, Girl, you gave. <laughs> I mean, girl, we don't have to. We don't have to pull. We, you gave somebody a gun right before he shot him, shot her, or started shooting at the car. You're just as guilty, just as guilty. While he might get thirty years, you deserve twenty. <laughs> okay. Period. Girl, if he get fifty, you deserve forty. <laughs> okay. Girl, like, so you done pulled the trigger, but girl, your hand is on the gun. Your, your fingerprints are on the gun. Because you gave it to him. Anyways. <clears throat> Y'all better not. <sighs> I just hope. You know what I hope? I hope that if you are raising sons that you can honestly say, oh, excuse me, y'all. You can honestly say that you are doing your best to make sure that your sons don't grow up and are released to the community when that time comes and they are violent animals. And that if it turns out to be that way, that you can say that I did the best that I could. I thought that I was raising someone who had a kind heart and a gentle soul and was not violent, right? 
because I do understand that sometimes, again, I, you know, sometimes we get it, we, we just get with the wrong crowd and your parents do do the best, not all parents, not all parents. You got blue face out. I mean, we know all parents don't do the best that they can do. But you have some parents out there who are doing the best that they can do. And sometimes their kids, we still end up just with the wrong crowd. You know? All right, let's move on. Tracy Ellis Ross discusses being single and childless at, childless at 50. I can feel my body. I can feel my body's ability to make a child, uh, to make a child draining out of me. Girl, I thought this was so deep what she said. Listen to this. Which, and somebody said this in the comment section. I do, I do. It is kind of like messed up that every time Tracy Ellis Ross does an interview, the things that makes the thing that makes the headlines is about her not being in a relationship or having a child. Okay. So Tracy Ellis Ross discusses being single and childless at 50 while also exper experiencing perimenopause. I can feel my body's ability to make a child draining out of me. So this is what she had to say. If somebody said this in the comment section, I do have to agree um, that the only times I really see like Tracy Ellis, I guess, not necessarily... Like the only time that it's like people when she does an interview, the thing that makes the headlines is her being a woman of a particular age and not having kids. Like this woman could have said something outstanding that was going on in her life. But the thing that, you know, is going to be highlighted the most is the fact that she does not have kids and she is not in a relationship at 50. All right. So anyways, let's talk about it. So Tracy Ellis Ross opened up about being single and childless at 50, revealing she has had to reconsider what it means to be a woman now that she, now that she is experiencing perimenopause. Uh, during an interview, um, the actress, say, act, actress stated, I can feel my body's ability to make a child draining out of me. Sometimes I find it hilarious, um, as if there is a fire sale going on in my uterus and someone's there screaming, all things must go. <laughs> Girl, this is my first time reading this. <laughs> I didn't listen to what she said. I saw a clip. I saw, I, this is, I saw like the last part of what she said that I felt was like, kind of like, oh my God, this is probably going to be deep, but I didn't read the full article. All right, so perimenopause precedes menopause, which is defined by 12 months without a period. It often begins between the ages of 45 and 55. It usually starts between the ages of 45 and 55. Um, but it can start considerably sooner. She continued, as my body becomes a foreign place to me that doesn't feel safe or like home, I don't know how to manage or control um, or fight the external binary narrative of the patriarchy that has, haunted me, that has haunted me and haunted me most of my adult life. Let me read that again, baby. As my body becomes a foreign place to me, that doesn't really feel safe or like home. I don't know how to manage or control or fight the external binary narrative of the patriarchy that has haunted me and that that has hunted me and haunted me most of my adult life. Girl, the blackish actress com uh, commanded. Um, mm, bitch, oh, I didn't even. Girl, I, what well, I. Swear to God that I was sitting here thinking about the trans community when I was talking about this. I swear to God I was. The black, the black, blackest actress commended the trans community for teaching her that womanhood is not exclusively tied to bearing children. But I know I see a lot of people, you know, you know, and I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. I know some of you who, for whatever reason, have a problem with trans women, the, some of the first thing y'all start to spit out your mouths is you ain't a woman because you ain't got no coochie. Well, some of them do got coochies. So what you gonna say now? You ain't got you ain't a woman because you ain't got no period. So the women that don't have periods anymore, they're no longer... Like when Tracy Ellis Ross no longer is able to have a period, is she no longer a woman? Okay. <sighs> Let's move on because I don't like, feel like getting, going down that road. Ross said she also re-examined her perspective on being single, 
noting that it has allowed her the freedom to build the life and family she wants. Oh, girl, I love Tracy Ellis Ross. Um, I have been single for a very long time. I have had many wonderful ins and outs of things. I know that's right. <laughs> Things that I done had a little play play. I had a little play play. You know, they, they come over, but then I send them on their way. Okay. Um, but no one has stuck to the pan. As a result, I get to curate my family, my chosen family around me, and I don't think I realized the gift of that until I started to get older. Girl, y'all better listen to Tracy Ellis Ross. <laughs> Shout out to Tracy Ellis Ross, baby. The rich auntie. <laughs> the rich auntie. Her and Mary J. Blige are the true definition of a rich auntie. Living their best life. Because every time I see Tracy, she be dressed up. I don't know where she be going. She be going somewhere. And every time I see Mary, she be dressed up partying. <laughs> she go, she go say hey to them kids, to them nephews and nieces of hers. She go over there, give them a little money, cash out from the girl, and she get back in them streets. Gone. <laughs> oh, you know who's a fool? Well, we already knew who she was. A, we already knew she was a fool, but I know she, she's a bigger fool, fool than what I thought. So, Danny Lay, this is what she tweeted out. At United, yesterday I was told my bag was scanned and arrived in Denver but I never received. I had over $30,000 worth of clothing, jewelry, purses, shoes, etc. in there. Can you guys help me? I seen all the bags come up from the wrap. Where is my bag? You're at somebody's house and girl, your stuff is at somebody's pawn shop. Girl, <laughs> what? Girl, did you really just get on the internet? Girl, did you really just, did you really, 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 did you really just get, girl, I love saying really, 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 girl, it's this movie called, um, it's a movie with Emma, um, what's her name? The chick with the red hair. I love her. She was in 101 Dalmatians. Emma something. Emma Stone? Emma Thompson? I don't know that white girl name. Um, but she was in a movie. Um, I think it was the Easy A. Really, really, really? Was it the Easy A? Wasn't it was the Easy A? It was some movie she was in. I can't remember the movie. She was like, really, really, really? <laughs> I said, this bitch is crazy. Anyway, so, um, Danny, and Danny, you crazy too, girl. Talking about where your stuff is gone, mama. You don't let everybody in the world know the truth that your suitcase had over $30,000 worth. And I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying it's right. But what I am saying is, girl, you a fool for getting on the internet letting the people know that, girl, whatever your luggage, whatever they find your luggage, girl, just unzipping it, girl, and they're going to be in for a good old girl surprise at the end of the rainbow. I had over $30,000 worth of clothing, jewelry, purses, and shoes in there. You ain't got nothing now. <laughs> you ain't got nothing now. I saw some people, and I haven't even really thought about this, but, you know, those, at first I didn't, I didn't even really hear about air tags until, like, a few weeks ago. So it's this thing called air tags that people are saying that, I guess if you, you know, just want your stuff, period, don't matter how much it costs, but she should have put, like, an air tag in her bag. So she would know where her stuff was at. Cause baby, it's gone now. Girl, it's gone. Ready some crackhead on the street. <laughs> it's some crackhead on the street by myself and all your stuff. Girl, it's somebody, it's somebody, somebody at that airport. Girl, the got your stuff, girl. And honey, Girl, they all up in they all up in somebody's hood on the corner. Girl, make a, you're hitting a lick. That's a mess. Ooh. <laughs> the View co-host Sonny Hostin had a breast reduction liposuction. I feel like a better version of myself. You know what, Sonny, you know, ever since Sonny, yeah, you know, I love Sonny Hostin. I think she's one of the smartest women on TV. Smartest people, period, on TV. But you know, ever since she called Will Smith violent, you know, they really, 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 really rubbed me the wrong way. <laughs> girl, and ever since then, I've been looking at her. I've been looking at Sonny, girl, like, you low-key a white woman. But y'all, a lot of y'all niggas was acting like Will Smith was girl, <laughs> was low-key Antonio Brown. 
That's how y'all was acting, though. Because I'll be, I be seeing people like, oh, girl, y'all was on that train, too. Y'all was on that same. Don't don't act like it was just white people out here talking about Will Smith. Because y'all was right there locking on. Girl, locking arms with the white niggas. Anyways, I'm going to let it go. I'm going to stop holding on to shit. <laughs> That's how I'm going to start working on that in Twitter. That's how I'm going to stop holding on to shit. Let shit go. <sighs> Sunny Hostin is sharing her cosmetic surgery journey. In this week's issue of People, the co-host reveals that she underwent a breast reduction and lift as well as liposuction last uh, summer. I feel like a better version of myself. Um... Austin tells people exclusively of the exclusively of the procedures which she moved forward with after years of struggling with back pain and body image issues. It was a health decision and a self care decision. Um, I thought I would feel shame, like oh my god, I'm doing plastic surgery like all these crazy celebrities, but I don't feel shame at all. And I hope sharing my story will help uh, more people. Um, if you're feeling so body conscious the way I was, they can they can do what they need to do to feel better. Girl, I'm, I'm with her on that, girl. Don't do nothing for no man, though. Do it for yourself. Sonny ain't did it for nobody but herself. Her husband, I'm going to give it to her. One thing I love, I'm, I'll just say it right now. One thing I love, I was watching the clip from The View. I'll put the link in the description box. They were, she was talking about once, once she advised her husband that this is what I'm going to do. Um, Like, he didn't want her to do it. You know, he was, I guess he was on, I guess he was in husband mode. I don't know, girl. Maybe, I think her, I think, I think her husband is a doctor too. So he probably was looking at, was looking at the risk. I don't know. But, you know, he didn't want her to do it. You know, he told her, reassured her that she was sexy the way that she was. But just like she said, I'm not a asking for your input. <laughs> I'm not asking for your permission. This is the information and this is what I'm doing. Because I have agency over my body. I thought, no, that's right. I thought, no, that's right. And somebody, I, I, I it's one thing if she was saying I'm about to get a titty attached to my forehead. <laughs> that might be something else. But girl, she's doing something that's going to make her feel better. Um, I didn't. I really didn't know that her breasts were as big as they were. I mean, I mean, girl, do I really go around looking at titties? I mean, sometimes I do, but girl, they just got to be in my face. You know what I'm saying? I mean, to feel like, damn, she got some big ass titties. Um, but she said she had big breasts and. Um, she was self-conscious and her back hurt and I know, you know, from f some friends of mine, um, that having big breasts, the girls, some of the girls complain about having no breasts. That's one thing, but girl, but having girl, I remember I had a friend, like she would, her bra strap would be like, you could see the bra strap, like in, like the, the line in her shoulder. Um, I remember one time she... A friend of hers was getting married and she needed a special bra just for the dress. And I think the bra alone was like $200. It was something crazy for a bra <laughs> that you probably, that you never was going to get until this girl actually be in her wedding. <laughs> you know what? Girl, them titties, baby, them titties would have been good. Do, do your titties hang low? To the, do they wobble to and fro? Can you tie them in a knot? Can you tie them in a bow? Can you throw them over your shoulder? Yes, girl, I'm not buying no bra for no $200, no. I ain't never bought no bra for no $200 up until, up until today. I ain't buying one. I don't want to even be in your wedding no more, girl. I just sit in the audience. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, shout out to Sonny. And shout out to everybody who... I, you know, I'm pro-plastic surgery. Y'all know I already know I am. You know, you know I'm pro-plastic I'm pro surgery. Um, but I am definitely about doing it for yourself. Um, even if it's something that, even if it's not necessarily just health reasons, if it's, if it's something that's going to make you feel better, not them BBLs. Y'all need to be careful with them BBLs. Because <laughs> some of y'all be looking like a fool. Um, and then I'm talking about, I'm talking to, I'm talking to the niggas and the bitches. <laughs> okay. Um, but, um, Nene's BBL looks nice from what I saw. I was like, oh, Nene did a good job. It, it don't look like she got nothing done. Like it looks good on her from what I saw. Um, if that was a new, a video I saw of her like walking and I was like, is that new? Oh, I didn't know, but I assumed it was new. A re more recent video. Um, but yeah, girl, as long as you're doing plastic surgery or whatever for yourself and not for some man, not for some woman, 
girl, not for girl, even if they girl, non-binary, it don't matter. If you're doing it, doing it for yourself, then that's one thing. Um, but yeah, shout out to Sunny. But she also talked about the price. She said it was over thirty thousand dollars. <laughs> She tried to act like she had to save it up. Girl, I, hit one. Girl, I get it. You, you know, I, I understand. Like the, you don't want to hear rich people just talking about. Oh, girl, it was only thirty thousand dollars. Because if she would have said something like, "Girl, it was only thirty thousand and everybody would have been like, "Girl, only thirty thousand." Bitch, read the room, girl. It's only a few of y'all in this room, girl, that could probably afford to just shell out thirty thousand dollars just like that today, right? Um, but she was saying that she was saying that on the show that it cost over thirty thousand. But she had to save. But she saved over a couple of years. Sunny, oh, that's cute. You trying to act like you po. Girl. Girl, you ain't po, girl. But that's cute, though, girl. Y'all want to just come across as, you know, the rich bitch. Girl. But shout out to Sunny. Hold up. She also said, my waist was so small, but my top was so big. I would never wear a minimizer bra. I would wear a minimizer bra in a sports bra or a binder all at the time. Like, all that at the same time? Girl, that's a lot. When she said she got liposuction, she got a breast reduction. Um, and she also I think got some little work done right here. Kenya you got a breast reduction. Tiana Taylor got a breast reduction. That's like, people be liking big titties, but girl, y'all don't be knowing what these women be going through. Be walking around with big titties and, girl, back be hurting and, girl, just, ugh. I couldn't even imagine. Girl, I couldn't even imagine. Girl, I just have an attitude all day. Just an attitude. Anyways, y'all. Shout out to everybody who got big titties, though. Shout out to the big titty alpha, honey. I know that's right. <clears throat> Kobe Bryant's uh, signed signature. I'm sorry. Girl, I don't know where a signature came from. Kobe Bryant signed jersey from MVP season. His auction expected to sell for $7 million. So according to reports, the signed purple and gold jersey could sell for $7 million. Kobe Bryant wore this jersey in 25 games during his 2007-2008 MVP season, which was the only time the legend won the MVPs. Uh, the NBA's Most Valuable Player Award in his 20-year career. Um, they say basically uh, he averaged 28.3 points, 6.3 rebounds, and 5.4 assists per game that season that led the Lakers to the NBA Finals. Um, they also stated that it's rare that an athlete can move past the bounds of their sport. But Kobe Bryant is certainly one of the special few who has left an everlasting impact on the world. This jersey was worn by Kobe, Kobe in one of the most iconic photos of him ever taken. Um, the jersey is expected to sell for anywhere uh, between 5 to $7 million when bidding opens on January. I'm sorry, February the 2nd. Girl. You know whoever, you know whoever buying that jersey? Whoever, who's ever going to buy that jersey is Filthy rich, it ain't got nothing to do but just spend money all day. They just fit like I got anybody who's buying that jersey is gonna be somebody who's like wealth, not even rich, who's wealthy, <laughs> like just wealthy, like wealthy, 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 like some nigga who live like you're in Dubai. <laughs> Girl, I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna get the jersey. Girl, like somebody who like like some some wealthy like girl, rich white man, probably in New York. Girl, I don't know, child. Anyways, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.